Father God, it's been amazing to see you at work this morning. Thank you for the great testimonies that we've had. Thank you for the way that we've seen you active in people's lives. Father God, now as we come to share something of your word together, we ask that you will continue to speak to us. Father, we we don't just want to understand more. We want more of you impacting our lives. So we pray for our brother Timmy. We ask for him for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit, that you will fill him, you will clothe him with your spirit, that your word will come through him into our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God of grace. What does it mean, the word grace? What does it mean? Each time and every time someone says grace, I think about my immediate junior sister. That's her name. And when we come together as a family and we say, let's say the grace, it's become mechanical. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But have we sat down and actually tried to understand what it means? For me, as I said, my junior sister, who I think is about two years younger, so grace has always been there. But about a year ago, the word grace took a special meaning. And I set out thinking, what does it mean in the actual sense of it? Yes, I know God's grace. Yes, I know what it means. But for the church, for mankind, what does it mean? And as you um, know, this morning we are going to have uh, a short version of the meeting. So I'm just going to do a short version of my talk. Maybe sometimes in the future we'll do something more elaborate. I think for the first step for us is to find out what the word grace means. When you go out into the world, onto the street and say, grace, what does it mean? For many people it means different things. Smoothness and elegance of movement. You know, you walk with that kind of... For some, it's an attractively polite manner of behaving. But for us, for you and for me, for my brothers and sisters, and for those listening on the internet, it means the free and unmerited favor of God. As manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestower of blessings. Free and unmerited. Mankind fell from grace. Mankind decided to go its own way. When our forebearers, and okay, yeah, I know that I'm I'm more than tanned. And I have brothers and sisters here that have to pay to go to sunny weather to get tanned and try to be like me. (laughs) But whatever, whether you are tanned or untanned, whether you are tanned naturally or tanned artificially, we are still related, yes? yes? We are still related. So our forebearers, disobeyed God and fell. But in all of that time, all through generations, God was still at work. 
wanting the best for mankind, wanting the best for us, seeking always, sending prophets upon prophets, speaking sometimes directly to his children. And this song that Frank and myself just sang, I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, for uh, just punishing you with that dreadful, dreadful voice of mine. I hope you forgive me. But whatever we are, for the Bible says that in sin we were conceived. We come to, to the world in sin. But my God and your God is full of grace and filled with compassion. I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to walk through Ephesians 2, chapters, um, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us, also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following his desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. So you see, we are all innate. We are all innate. And if from this passage is saying that Without exception, indeed the Bible says that there are no righteous men on earth. Well, with one exception, Jesus Christ. That person who died for you and for us. Who was without sin but was encumbered with our sins. He went to the cross. Not because... He, done anything, he did anything wrong. He went to the cross because we did something wrong. Our iniquities have separated us from God. Our sins have hidden his face from us. So, if that passage is saying all of that, we are indeed in need of grace. We are indeed in need of God saying, my child, come back home. Come back home. So that part for me means grace is indeed needed because we are. And for us, for some of us here this morning, are still in the world. And the, the need to hear this clearly. And the need to hear this powerfully. And the need to let it sink in and germinate. And grow. It's been an amazing morning. Actually at a point in time we thought. There's no need for this talk. Because God was already doing something. But we felt that. This needed hearing. With everything that had happened. 
If there's anyone that is in doubt, they need to hear of God's grace. They may think that they are in a good place. But grace is indeed needed because we are in the world. In Romans chapter 9 verse 10, it says, There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And when we look at all these passages... Actually, if you get, when you get home, uh, read Romans chapter 3. These passages actually were taken from other parts of the Bible. To illustrate how mankind is. And God looks down and looks at these children and he thought, you know, I don't know. When I'm in my second room, second floor room, and I hear the, all the shouting, all the brother this, sister this, going on, and all the rackets going on, and I think, goodness gracious me. I wish I'll have some peace. And sometimes it feels like that. When we are in our state of unbelieving and doing all sorts of things that we shouldn't be doing, God looks down and thinks, my children, what have I done? But that passage goes on, it says, but because of his great love for us, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, Made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. Because of his great love for us. It is by grace you have been saved. Even when we were dead in transgressions. Wow. Wow. That is grace. That is grace. That he could still embrace us. He could still hold us. He could still call us his children. Even when we are still far away. And I want us to hear this. The God we serve is a God of compassion, a God of mercy, and a God of love. Many religions of the world don't believe in love. They don't believe in compassion. They don't believe in God that is graceful. But my God does. He loves. He's gracious. He has compassion on mankind. He looked down on mankind and thought, this generation, these people are lost. I need to bring them back to me. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms of Christ. In order that in the coming ages it might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Compare the first three verses. And then the fourth verse started with birth. You know, when, when someone is being saying good things, you are kind, you are this, you are that, you are that, you are that, and they say but. I'd rather say you are bad, you are this, you are that, you are that, but. The first three verses was about 
what we, what we are as human beings. And then the fourth verse started with birth. That gladdens my heart. Because it gives me hope. It says love. It says mercy. And it says grace. Someone wrote and said, love is that in God which causes him to reach out to his creations. Mercy is withholding punishment. And grace is the unmerited favor. Someone also put it like this. Love says, imagine a reservoir of God's love flowing. It becomes river of mercy. And then mercy becomes a torrent of grace. And then verse 8 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourself. It is a gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. So it's not because I'm able to stand. It's not because I have the privilege of standing here. That I have the grace. Or it's not because I can um, punish you with my voice by singing that I receive the grace. It is there because God has given it. Yes, it is good. Yes, it is appropriate. Yes, it is right that as children of God, we need to use our potentials. Actually, we have something in this church that we do uh, um, every so often, saying, reaching your potentials. Because I believe that actually, that it is sin if you are not using what God has put in you. Be it to sing, be it to come out in front and speak. Be it to, to have compassion on your fellow brothers and sisters. And when I say brothers and sisters, I'm not just saying about people here. People that you meet out on the road. Because God wants us to be the light out on the street. At our places of work. In our community. In our homes. He wants us to be salt. He wants us to be light. Wherever, and wherever we find ourselves. So it is essential as children of God. That we project light. It is essential. But it is also correct. Right and correct to say that by grace we are saved. And if this morning you are sat here and you think, how can I have that grace, that unmerited love, that unmerited gift? How can I have it? It says in um, Acts chapter 38, um, chapter 2, verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized. We've seen it this morning. Such a powerful image we have seen this morning. 
And if you have any doubt about it, I am repeating it, my brothers and sisters. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far affair. For all whom the Lord our God we call. Jesus did the work when he died on the cross. So that you can have the grace. And think about this. What an amazing God we have. And what an amazing grace that we have that a wretch like me is saved. That someone that was blind like me can see. Grace is here today and is free. And is unmerited. And I'm challenging you. I'm not inviting you. I am challenging you. If you don't know about this grace. Open your hearts today. Let God, let God come into it. And you see it turn around in your life. Let's pray. From what we have seen this morning, words that we have heard from our brother and sister, the three baptisms, and the words that God has spoken, it may be that this morning you think, I need to be in place of grace. Or if there's anything you want someone to stand with you about, please feel free to stand up or come out and someone will stand with you and agree with you. Don't leave this place without taking a step, without doing something about it. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for the work of grace that was done so that we can be called your children. We thank you for the freedom that we have. And we thank you for the unmerited love you have for us. We pray, Lord God, that uh, you keep this constantly in our hearts, in our mind. And that we, as we go out and about, we will radiate this to those that we come into contact with. Let the way we live our lives be example. Minister to people. Father, we pray that your power will be at work in our lives and that we will see you 
at work in every situation. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.